Audio excerpts from the book Emergence by Thunderhands. Forward. Although this book is classified as a work of fiction, I would like to say a word about it. This novel is based on my experiences of growing up in Arizona, and most of it is fact-based. The exercises or techniques in the chapter teaching the techniques are real, and I encourage you to try them. The tantric and yogic descriptions are also authentic. This book is full of esoteric and shamanistic teachings. My purpose was to entertain while informing. The twin soul concept offered a way to do that. Many have asked me about Hopi prophecy in the fifth world. This novel includes my visions and ideas regarding that and more. Many writers claim authenticity. Authenticity is like that old saying, the proof is in the pudding. My view is try some of the techniques and ideas in this book. There are also advanced tantric sexual techniques described in this book in a tasteful and thoughtful way, along with some incidents of fighting. The techniques described regarding the martial arts that are used are also real and fact-based, as are the concepts and traditions surrounding them. The author suggests you seek a professional training regarding any fighting art. The bottom line, this book might best be described as a shaman's Bible hidden within a novel. Good reading, Roger Thunderhands Gilbert. Description A story of a young native man and woman who discover that they are twin souls and wisdom keepers. Their path becomes intertwined with Hopi prophecy and shamanism. Their purpose is to teach others a way that will change their lives forever. Excerpt from the chapter, The Beginning. His fear of thunderstorms soon turned into respect and reverence, and there was one incident that stuck in his mind for the rest of his life. It happened one day when he was in his yard. His father bought a large swing set for the backyard. It was made of sturdy steel tubing and consisted of a ladder, a slide, and a swing suspended by chain. He loved to swing as high as he could, bail out and yell, Geronimo, while flying through the air like a hawk. Sometimes he would climb the ladder to the top and gaze at the sky, or hang from the crossbar and do chin-ups. One day as he went out to use his swing set, he noticed dark and ominous thunderclouds gathering above. In his mind, he wouldn't be deterred from climbing the ladder and doing his chin-ups no matter what. As the rain began to fall, he scurried up the ladder to reach the top of the cross pole. He felt brave, so as he reached the top of the ladder, he shouted and shook his fist at the sky. He exclaimed in a loud voice, All right, come on, I'm not afraid of you, big bad thunder. Just as the last word came out of his mouth, there came a loud clap of thunder. It was accompanied immediately by a strike of lightning so close you could smell the ozone. It frightened him so much that he lost his balance and fell backwards to the ground, landing on his back with a thump. Wow, that was close, he thought. He raised his head, looked around, and realized that he was still alive but dazed. Some of the hair on his arms seemed to be singed. He laughed rather than cried and ran for shelter as the torrential downpour began. He didn't know how close it really was, 
but he knew from that moment on that the thunders or the thunder people had spoken to him in a direct way. Somewhere in his consciousness he realized he had been spared and given a vision at the same time. He knew his name should be Thunder. The intense dreams and visions began shortly after that. Thunder became his name because to him it had deep meaning. He told everyone to call him Thunder and the name stuck. He was to find out later that the Lakota tribes called Thunder Wakia, and they also believed there were Thunder beings, or the Wakanyan living in the clouds with the thunderstorms. From the chapter, Natalie. Thunder walked into his math class the next day, hung his hat on the peg and sat down. He listened to the teacher ramble on and on about algebra. It was boring and he already knew what she was going to say before she said it. His eyes started getting heavy and he must have dozed off or something because the bell was ringing and woke him up. He looked at the clock above the door. Twelve noon. Time for lunch. I'll run home real quick, he thought. Hell, Mom's cooking beats the school's food by a mile. He grabbed his lucky hat from the peg as he walked out the door, letting it slam behind him. He could already smell the leftover beef stew and taste the coffee. Just as he rounded the corner, he noticed the th same three thugs that had been picking on that boy a while back. He just smiled. How's it going, he said. One boy who was blonde and had what he called a buzz job haircut said, Not bad, Navajo Joe. The name's Thunder, if you don't mind. Well, look, said Buzz Job, if I want to call you Navajo Joe, then by God, you're Navajo Joe. So what are you going to do about it, you red nigger? Thunder heard some faint words in his head, sword of no sword, and just replied in a calm voice, I have nothing to prove to you, man. He started to walk around the three and, as he got halfway by them, his peripheral tracking vision saw a hand come down on his shoulder and grab it. You ain't going nowhere, you son of a... And before Buzz Job could finish, Thunder's mind heard more words. Chinna, Shuto, Heel Palm, and the phrase drop to your center. He acted instantly and with no thought. Thunder spun left, and his right hand moved like lightning up to his left shoulder and grabbed the boy's hand like a vice. His left hand came up and grabbed the boy's elbow. He spun back to the right after pinning the hand and grabbing the elbow, executing an Aikido move. He heard a voice cry out in pain. Buzz Job was bent over from the leverage and movement he applied. He stepped back and in between Buzz Job's legs with his left leg, taking Buzz Job center. Thunder then swept his left leg back, catching his heel on the inside calf of his opponent. Buzz Job's feet were swept apart and out. He landed on his ass hard with a loud thump and fell backwards. He heard a crack as Buzz Job's head hit the pavement. Just then another boy approached from his right. Thunder's right hand whipped out in a chopping backhand motion called a shuto and nailed the boy's throat near the carotid artery. As he turned back to the middle, the last boy was standing in front with a right fist coming his way. Instinctively, Thunder's left arm came up from his left side fast and hard and deflected the oncoming right fist into the air leaving his opponent's midsection and torso wide open. His right hand was already in motion. After cocking it back by his right side, he thrust it forward with an open hand, palm extended. He struck the boy dead center in the chest, just below the sternum around the heart. 
Thunder heard nothing, but a white light seemed to envelop his whole being. It was over in seconds, and all three boys were on the ground. Buzz Job was moaning, while the second boy was lying on the ground, holding his throat and making choking sounds. The third was on his back, motionless. Thunder saw his hat on the ground, gently and calmly picked it up by the brim and placed it on his head. He was as calm and cool as a cucumber. Just then, out of the corner of his eye, he sensed a beautiful presence that was both soft and gentle, but intense. It was a woman. He whipped around and stared right at her. Hell, he thought to himself, she's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. She stood almost as tall as he was. She looked to be about five foot six, slender, dressed in tight jeans. She had calf eye moccasins with fringe and multicolored beads were hanging from her leather blouse. She also had long, dark, beautiful hair streaming down her shoulders. He looked at her face and it stunned him. Her features were that of some ancient Mayan goddess. Her eyes were big, deep, and dark, her lips a soft rose color. He could see in her soul, and a term came to his mind, twin soul. She spoke in a soft voice, and a little wry smile came across her lips. You came just in time, stud. They were really starting to get on my nerves. His mouth dropped open, and he was speechless. She spoke again in a soft whisper, and her voice sounded like the wind blowing through the eucalyptus trees. If you would like to purchase a copy of Emergence, you can go to spiritofcrazyhorse.com with the triple W dot spiritofcrazyhorse, all one word, dot com. Scroll down to the book Emergence. A Journey of Love, Twin Souls, and Shamanism by Thunderhands. Available at Amazon. And if you hit this link here, as you can see on the screen, that will get you the Kindle version. Or you may purchase the paperback version. Whatever is your preference. And I would like to read the description here. A spiritually gifted young native man is predestined to meet a beautiful Hopi woman who is his twin soul. Their sacred union elevates him to dimensional consciousness, precipitating a series of visions and changes. As their love deepens, the realization of their destiny becomes apparent. A spiritual supernatural aura surrounds and pro projects them into events and changes, which entwines them with Hopi prophecy, shamanism, and other worlds. They emerge into a unified, powerful force of those who hold wisdom or wisdom keepers. As they prepare themselves for the fifth world, they pass life changing knowledge to others and that's the description and there is the cover and if you wish to purchase this book please do so thank you and blessings to you all this is thunder